Are you ready for some motherfucking NASCAR? It's the time of year when racetracks across America open their doors again, with the spring and summer months approaching, and all beer st- alcohol purchases are purchased out of beer stores on a daily basis. Budweiser, Miller Lite, Bud Light, and Jack Daniels sell out at a rapid pace. It's the time of year where rednecks gather around for the traditional stock car racing. It is a brand new era with new faces and new places. A lot of big names are gone. It is truly a new era and a new generation. Let's see how this field, year's field stacks up. David Reagan, you're in a shitmobile. You're fucked. The good news is to Benedetto, you're becoming a popular fan favorite. The bad news, you're in a shitmobile. You're fucked. Well, Chris Busher, you've shown you can't pull wins out of your ass in a shitmobile, but that was almost two years ago. You've done fuck all since. You're just waiting until a ride either opens up at Roush Fenway or you become the third Roush driver. You're fucked for now. Hey, AJ, did you hear? There's now a road course in the chase. You might get three wins this year. But then again, you realize road courses are the only thing AJ Almendaner is good at. He doesn't do much anywhere else other than Dover. It's either road course or bust. You're fucked. Trevor Bain, out of all the Roush cars last year, you were by far the worst hands fucking down. You weren't even close to what Stenhouse was. I am disappointed in you. You need to get your shit together or you may be out of here for Chris Buescher or even Ryan Reed. Or Ty Majeski or whoever the hell Roush decides to replace your worthless ass with. You haven't won a race since 2011. Get going or you're fucked. Well, Ty, you're with your main racing with Geico. But you haven't done anything yet. You're fucked for now. But you'll be taking over that 31 for Ryan Newman in a couple, a couple years. Holy shit, it happened. Bubba Wallace finally got a cup ride. And it's in the Fame 43, driven by Richard Petty. Some changes to this team is that it makes the manufacturer change from Ford to Chevrolet. You've shown you have talent in any ride. This, you could be a potential dark horse. If not this year, in the future years. If I had to pick any driver, I'd pick you as a surprise driver this year. Ryan Newman, you really had to screw Chase Elliott out of a win at Dover last year, didn't you? You couldn't move over when you had nothing to race for. And let Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch bow down on their own. But no, you like racing 100% because of that bullshit rule NASCAR implemented back in 2013. You are an ignorant piece of shit. I cannot wait for the day you fucking retire. Get used to being in the basement again. Paul Menard, you're in another half-decent ride. The Wood Brothers 21. You also bring Menards as a sponsorship. Paul, you've driven with er, DEI, which is now Chip Ganassi. You've also driven for RCR. Two decent teams. This is the third get-your-shit-together moment. Better get going or else you're out of here. Casey Kane, you went from Henrik Motorsports to now the 95 shitmobile for Living Ray Family Racing. Being fucked is all but a given now. Okay, which form of Austin Dillon are we going to see this year? Are we going to see the 2016 form of him where he was consistent and, ma- and was doing well in the chase? Or are we going to see the 2017 version of Austin Dillon where he was garbage but managed to pull a win out of his ass at Charlotte? Austin... I think if you could do a combination of both, you could be a great driver in, in the future and in 2018. You're, you are now responsible for the uprising of RCR back from the dead. Eric Omarola, you got a half-decent ride. And the good news is you freed us of the hell of that, of that ego bitch Danica Patrick. I wouldn't underestimate Eric Omarola. We've seen in the truck series, when he put him in a good ride... He could be competitive. 2010 was a good example with Kyle Busch Motorsports, where he was contending for a championship and winning races. I have you as a potential dark horse this year. Okay, Kurt. Last year was interesting. You you started the year off winning the Daytona 500. Then you didn't do fuck all till September, the last month of the regular season, when you were going top 5, top 10. 
Then in round one of the chase, you became a victim of the bullshit known as the chase grid and were knocked down in round one. You know, there's always been those talks about, are you coming back? Are you not coming back? It's an if's, who's who. Kurt, you've got a couple years. You might be the one on the chopping block to get replaced next by a young driver. Better get going. Mother of God. Ricky Stenhouse, what the hell happened last year? You not only won one race, you won two races. And not only did you make the chase, you made it to the second round of the chase. Holy shit. Most of it was maybe off luck, but hey, you're respectable in your own right. You have made Roush family great again. The two wins may have been on restricted plate tracks, but who gives a damn? You still won. I don't know if you can replicate the same success you had last year, but you could be a dark horse for sure. Congratulations, Alex Bowman. You finally got a good cup ride. You get to replace Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now, out of all the Hendrick drivers, they prob everyone probably has you as the worst. I think you're better. I think you can win a race, a couple races this year. For sure. So, yeah. Alex Bowman, do not disappoint. Drive that 88 home. Okay, Jamie, out of both Chip Ganassi cars, you were the slowest of the two to Kyle Larson. You didn't even win a race last year while Kyle Larson won four races. Shit needs to change with the one team. Jamie, if you want to show you're anywhere close to Kyle Larson's level, you need to win a race. You have, however, you haven't won since Talladega 2013. So you need to get your shit together, or you may be out of a ride soon. Clint Boyer, out of all the drivers last year, you disappointed everyone on so many levels. You were expected to win a couple races and make the chase. You did neither. You shit the bed and exceeded every expectation of getting your dick kicked in. You have a year or two to get it, to get your shit together. Or you're out of a ride too. Because I know Cole Custer in Xfinity is wanting a cup ride. He either, he's either going to replace you, Kevin, I'm not Kevin, Kurt Busch, or Eric Amarola. Do not disappoint. Okay, William, you had a quick uprising. You spent one year in, in truck series, won eight truck races in your rookie year. You only spent one season in Xfinity. You won four Xfinity races, and you won the title. Now you're in the cup. Now a lot of cup leeches you raced, that was only on a part-time basis. Now you deal with them on a full-time basis. And you, and you also got to deal with other leeches, dr cup drivers, that don't compete in Xfinity, like the Jimmy Johnsons and etc. I think this is going to be a wake-up call for you. You're going to get real competition now. Well, Daniel, I can't say much about your 28-17 season. Like, you were called in about a month before the 500 to replace the surprising or shocking retirement of Carl Edwards. The first half of the year, you raced like dog shit, didn't know how to drive a race car. Then once Darian Grubb was fired, I mean, not Gary Grubb, Dave Rogers was fired, you finally figured out how to drive a race car. I think this year we're going to see your true talent. Hopefully you can win on a track that isn't a road course. Good luck. Oh, well, Joey, who would have thought that ta encumbering a race win would cause your team to fall apart and you end up missing the chase for the first time in five years? Logano, I do not like you one bit. You are a complete asshole. You are an ignorant at dipshit. I didn't even care when Kyle Busch punched your face last year. I could give a fuck about you or Kyle Busch, because as far as I'm concerned, you both suck. But this year, I do expect you to make a comeback. That last year was a rare off year. You will make a charge again. Don't fuck this up now. Eric Jones, you're now in a competitive cup ride. You now replace the retiring Matt Kenseth in the 20 car. It is clear you are part of this new era of new young drivers. I think you can win a race this year. The potential is there. Just don't choke. Ryan Blaney, you got an upgrade. You went from the Wood Brothers to now a third Penske car. You are now, by far, the most popular driver at Penske. You, I, we all said, let's see what you can do in a top ride. 
you're now on a top ride. Let's see what your full potential is. We're gonna see the best of you now. Jimmy Johnson, what the fuck happened last year? You had one of the worst seasons for a reigning champion. The S Mr. Seven Time. Last year was by far your worst season of your fucking career. Even though you won three races, you still didn't perf You still were bad. Every statistic you've had last year was bad. Somehow you made it to the third round of the chase, off pure luck and the bullshit known as the chase grid. And then in round three, cold hard reality kicked in. Jimmy, and also Jimmy Yu is your car chief and Ron Malik. Father time might be catching up, Jimmy. If you want to win that eighth title and pass Petty and Earnhardt and have the most titles by any driver, you've got three years to do it. Don't fuck this up. Okay, Brad. So, last year, you started the year off strong, you didn't do fuck all, and by the time you came to the chase with your two victories... You then went on and complained how Toyota's had an unfair advantage and that uh, we're in for a rude awakening and NASCAR hasn't let a team away since, two th since this far since the 70s, which caused a civil war between you and Joe Gibbs Racing and Furniture Row. Chevy has responded to this Toyota thing by making the Camaro set 01. Ford responds by doing fuck all. You demanded change, Kozlowski. You did not get it. Maybe if you quit whining and bitching and focused on actually winning a title, you'd actually, you may actually get what you want. Like hell, you made the final four. What else do you fucking want? You better keep, either get, I think we're in for a rude awakening this year. I think you're going back to that 2015 season you had where you struggled in every aspect. Mediocrity awaits you, my friend. So, Denny Hamlin, I got one question to ask you. How in the living hell did you get your whole entire state and hometown to fucking hate you? Oh, I forgot. It was because you wrecked the new Dale Jr. Chase Elliott. Denny Hamlin, you are, you are one of the top drivers without a championship. You are now the, the, you are now the modern era Mark Martin. Denny Hamlin, if you want to win a title, you better hurry. Because fodder time is not only catching up, I feel you're going to be the next Gibbs driver out that will be replaced by a younger one. You better hold on to the 11 car seat tightly. Okay, Chase Elliott, is this the year you finally win a race? Last year in the chase, you should have won four races. But you man but every four time you had a chance to win, you pissed it away. You've had seven second place finishes in two years. Maybe now that you're driving the 9 car instead of 24, it will help take some of that pressure off. You have to win a couple races this year if you want to beat, if you want people to take you serious. And you also have to be more aggressive on the track. Get it done. Out of all the Stuart Haas drivers that struggled with the Chevy to Ford change last year, you did the best of them. You won two races, and you made the final four for the third time in four years. Harvick, though, I do expect you to make the final four because you're always good. You're always you're called the closer because you're always there at the end. Last year was not the dominant self we've seen the last three years. Mainly that manufacturer change was a factor. Father time is slowly catching up, but I think you got a couple more good years left. Maybe another title run. I think this year you've had a year to get used to the manufacturer change. I think you can be great this year. And you can be back to your old self. Get, good luck. Well, Kyle Busch, the first half of the year, you found every way to lose a race. And in the first half of the year, you complained about how there are no more real racetracks. Then again, Kyle, we remember that any racetrack you don't win at is not a real racetrack. And if it's not a real racetrack, it's fake news. Second half of the year, you finally figured it out. You found real racetracks in Pocono, Marnesville, Bristol... Dover, and yeah, that's about it. Oh, and New Hampshire. There it is. So you found five real racetracks that you won at. Kyle Busch, I think you might be in for reality because you were the runner-up last year. Usually the championship runner-up does not fare well the following year. 
proved those statistics wrong. Kyle Larson, last year was your breakout year. You won four races. You were a lock for Homestead. And then Kansas happened. Can we? I do not want to talk about much, but I gotta. Kansas, you blow your engine. You have only bad race in round two, and you are knocked out of the chase. Because of the bullshit known as the chase grid. Kyle Larson, out of all the drivers this year, you are the, you are going to be the hungriest and the one with the biggest chip on your shoulder. Out of all the drivers here, I actually pick you as my championship favorite. If I had to pick any driver out of this, out of everyone here, I'd pick you as my champion for this year. Kyle Larson, you are going, you are the leader of the youth movement, the new era. Win a shit ton of races this year. Martin Truex, you have no idea how bad you needed last season. After everything you've been through, you know, where you weren't doing as well with DEI, where you weren't doing as well with MWR, then the bullshit at Richmond in September 2013 that cost you a chase spot. You then had that rough first year of Furniture Row. You had 2015 where you made the shocking, we made the Final Four, but weren't good enough to win the title. Then 2016 when you were eliminated from the bullshit known as the chase. Last year, you dominated every statistic for every driver. Wins, top fives, top tens, laps led, everything. You were the best driver last year. And the Chase Grid finally awarded you with the championship. You needed that run last year. It'll be hard to replicate that success. I do think you could do win another championship and go back to back. But it'll be super hard to do it since the last driver to do it was Jimmy Johnson back in 2009 and 2010. Can't, let's see if you can actually do this. In terms of the Chase predictions... I see 10 of the 16 chase drivers being the same, with the 10 returning chase drivers being Martin Truex, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Blaney, and Austin Dillon, and the six new chasers being Eric Jones, Joey Logano, Daniel Suarez, William Byron, Alex Bowman, and a surprising Bubba Wallace. Now, now I think most people will accuse me of jinxing these drivers. We're just going to have to wait and see. Now watch me get half of this chase prediction wrong by mid-season. Watch it. I'm fucking, I'm fucking calling. I'm going to get half of this wrong. Watch it.